Hello again and welcome to another new speaker in the uh, DFO Dental Webinar Series. I started working with Lockton about four years ago and we were working jointly on an indemnity product. We took a fresh look at indemnity and Lockton helped me understand that it was just an insurance like any other. Not only that, there was a certain amount of duplication in the current system because the initial advice you get from your indemnity company was also available if you were a member of a professional association like the BDA or the DPA, so you were in effect paying for it twice. Between us we managed to put together Dental Shield, which is the subsidised indemnity product for DFO members. Managing the risk of being sued for damages for negligence is one of the risks that dentists and dental practices have to manage, but there are many others and many similarly clever ways to do it, and Lockton knows all of them, so I'm particularly pleased that Tom and Louise are going to take us through what they can offer dental practices. This webinar is being recorded and will be available online afterwards, so if anything is unclear, you can watch this again, or any of the others in the series, and forward the link to anyone else you think may benefit. Hello there, thanks Derek again for the intro. Okay, so if we're looking at Lockton at a glance, um, Lockton was originally an American-based family-run company. Uh, it started up by a man called Jack Lockton in 1966 in Kansas. Um, over the last, well, over the years, building a large and well-respected insurance brokers within the United States. In 2006, um, Lockton came over to the UK and built their headquarters in London, in the heart of the London insurance market. Uh, we then continued to expand across the UK, opening regional offices in Bristol, Birmingham. Manchester, Brighton, Edinburgh and also Belfast. The London office was the first venture into Europe and is the hub of the international wholesale business. We also have continued to grow and internationally spread across from Asia, Europe, Middle East and also Latin America. Lockton uh, employs around 3,800 people and we're the world's largest independently owned insurance broker. We deliver deliver services throughout the world to businesses of all sizes, um, varying from professional indemnity, excuses, ex sorry, executive financial risk, uh, marine, aviation, private clients, just to name a few, and obviously healthcare. We are a registered Lloyds broker and have strong relationships with leading insurers <coughs> and clients, which increases our reputation and ability to do business. Um, let me go to the next slide where we have the Lockton Healthcare team which was originally part of the Affinity Department, um, which has now recently become more of a division of its own. With over 30 years experience involved right across the healthcare sector, um, currently looking, sorry, currently providing cover for some of the following. So it, we look at individual practitioners, which looks at dentists, consultants and GPs. We do medical malproduct liability. We have a link of affinity associations which include osteopaths, uh, chiropractors, acupuncturists and homeopaths which we have a uh, very strong relationships with their associations which has helped us to provide cost effective cover for these associations. Uh, we also look at hospitals and clinics and international healthcare risk. Uh, we have good, a very good relationship with our US colleagues which mirrors our passion and knowledge around the healthcare sector. Um, we also do NHS outsource providers, new business startups, and consor um, consortium providers. Okay, so if we look also then again at the next screen, we can have a look at the team. So we have Kevin Kleine, who is a partner with over 25 years, years experience, uh, Asgar Hassanali with over 30 years plus uh, experience in lots of insurance market, Tom Hester, who's with us, um, is an account handler. Tom joined Lockton as a member of the sales team, um, Louise, which is me. Um, like Tom, I also joined Lockton as a member of the sales team. I've recently joined the Levmail team and now I'm concentrating on renewals, our new business schemes and Lockton's large book of complementary medicine. Um, basically, just to find um, the Lockton and uh, the DFO and how, um, in partnership, we want to create um, a bespoke, competitive and innovative product. Um, and products for the for the needs of the members. Um, recently, I was speaking um, to someone within the healthcare sector, and they felt what was really letting them down was um, that the policy that they purchased 
wasn't allowing them to um, move forward as a business. They felt that they were continuously in constraint to, um, to, the, to the limits within the policy. Uh, and what we want to do is be able to put a, a product which understands your needs as a dentist or medical practitioner uh, and reacts to your needs rather than holding you back. Um, we don't want to be in a situation uh, where you're looking say, to move into a new profession, um, Botox being one of the, the things which seems very, very strong within dentistry at the moment, uh, and the policy turns around and says, no, we can't cover that. We want to be able to say, yes, we can, here's separate options. Um, the competitive side, yes, um, it's very, very key, especially in today's financial climate, to have a competitive policy. Um, we've always um, worked towards having the most competitive prices uh, and compared, competed with our competition. Um, but at the same time, um, sometimes the cover is more important. Uh, and when, when you do come to discuss your indemnity with us or your surgery insurance or or your legal expenses covered, depending on what it is that you, you're after. Um, we would obviously sum up the, the benefits to having, say, you know, a, a variant of product at a, at a premium that's competitive, but at the same time making sure the cover meets your needs. Um, my third sort of element to the, the partnership was innovative. Um, this is from everything from payment um, to the cover to the legal advice to resolving claims. We want a number of different options so that it's not just about the cover when you come to Lockton, it's about everything else, you know, how much you pay for your monthly repayments if you want to pay over 10 months, for example. So, uh, yeah, we really hope that the solutions that we come up for our clients really meet um, your insurance needs. So, uh, coming on to um, the slides that I've put up um, on the screen now, very, very sort of brief points. Um, on the limit of indemnity uh, within dentistry. Um, we've set up to 10 million. Um, now, you know, the, the limit of indemnity is something which I'm asked about on a, I'd say, daily basis. Um, we can offer up to 25 million, actually, as it happens, uh, depending on some contracts which are coming through at the moment. Um, with regards to um, probably the most asked question, you know, what limit do I require? Unfortunately, there isn't really um, a specific figure, uh, other than for NHS work, you, you do have to have a minimum of five million, but within private work, um, it, it is to, sort of um, not so much up, up to you, but you know, there, there is a bit of variance. Um, we will always advise for the, the higher limits, um, and we'll obviously work towards, again, as I said in my previous uh, comment, to be as competitive as possible with the best amount of cover. Um, moving on to the excess. Um, when we originally did the, um, the, the Dental Shield product that Derek mentioned at the beginning of the, uh, the presentation, um, we were offering a nil excess. Um, with an excess, obviously, there's, there is room to uh, reduce premiums by increasing excess. Um, it's not quite as the, sort of the, 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 the um, reductions that are available aren't um, quite as, as much as some may think. Um, you know, by having, say, a £10,000 access on a policy wouldn't necessarily bring a huge saving, um, but there obviously is savings to come. Um, if um, one of the things that I'll come on to um, a bit later on is um, sort, of, sort of the distressed um, risk, as it's, as it's called within the insurance market, so if, if there's been any issues with the GDC or patient complaints, um, then sometimes carrying an excess does allow us to firstly offer cover, but secondly um, bring the price into a slightly more competitive area, but I will come on to that later on. Um, my next uh, note there is the leading um, medical malpractice insurers. Um, at Lockton we have access to um, the London market, and we have sort of five or six um, insurers that will go to on a regular basis that sort of um, that meet the needs of our, of our clients. Um, they, you know, some of them have over 25 years' experience within the healthcare sector uh, and specialise in different things from um, you know, whether it's you know, an individual practitioner, a corporate risk, or, you know, um, for example, we have a market who really specialises in, in sort of medical practitioners in trouble. Um, so when maybe their membership's been cancelled from one of the defence bodies, um, they're there to help. Um, so obviously it's a claims-made policy in the London market. 
um, compared to a number of the defence police that have like um, different types of policy. But again, um, on the event of uh, um, us talking about uh, the policy that we'd be able to provide, I'd like to be able to sort of run through the different uh, variants at that point. Um, we have legal expenses cover, which is available as well on top of this policy. Um, a lot of the policies that are available in the London market may um, have exclusions for things like GMC uh, or GDC, so in the case of a dentist. Um, this policy basically offers uh, a 24-hour legal helpline uh, and access to a solicitor in the event of you needing help with maybe responding to the GDC um, and then obviously further if, if things do go further. Um, and as I mentioned uh, a moment ago, uh, premium payments available. Um, as the cost of indemnity increases year by year, uh, as I said, well, obviously we're always trying to keep that to the, that uh, increase at a minimum. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the prices are, are increasing, and uh, so we offer a 10 monthly facility, um, and uh, full details of that can be obtained at the point of getting a quotation. So just moving on. Um, sometimes considered a, a poor choice of words, sort of distressed, but it's kind of what's used in the London market, so uh, excuse me if uh, the fence is caused, but um, it's something I've specialised in over the last four or five years um, and helped many sort of dentists and GPs um, out of sticky situations where the defence bodies have, have declined cover. Um, I have to say in the, in the last five years, the, you know, the reasons have haven't really changed, but we would say that we're seeing more and more people um, losing membership um, at point of, of renewal due to um, claims. Um, the, the, the London market is, um, you know, is, is there and ready um, to help. Um, one thing that I would always explain to, to someone in a situation um, where their membership has been revoked that premiums are going to be on the increase. Um, but one of the things that we have which is which is different is that we have access to five separate markets and so that after 12 months of cover if there's been no claims we'll obviously as a broker negotiate with your current market to get the best available price um, but we then have the possibility to move to another market and say look you know we've insured this uh, dentist for six or for 12 months there's been no claims there's you know faultless on, on payment and um, you know, we, we, we're looking to, to reduce this, and uh, we have seen some really successful reductions in premiums. So even if year one is a bit scary, uh, over time it, it, it does improve. So um, you know, some of the options that you have um, is a variable excess available. Uh, as I explained earlier, um, you know, having a higher excess doesn't always give you uh, a massive reduction in premium. However, what it will do um, is make uh, the risk more enticing. You know, they make insurers more interested in, in, in offering terms. You know, if they think that they won't be dealing with sort of the small matters, the sort of um, refunds of a of thousand pounds, for example, um, it does make them much more inclined to offer a more competitive premium. So, uh, fair access is something that we'll always discuss. Um, as, as already spoken about, we have a number of leading medical malpractice insurers, so um, we could talk you through uh, the options that would be available. Um, legal expenses cover, um, I will come on to this in a bit more detail in a second, um, but uh, we feel it's, it's an important element and we'll always um, offer um, an option uh, and go give you full details of the policy that's available. Um, and as discussed again on the previous uh, slides, premium payments um, are available uh, and this is obviously just to benefit if the premium is on a massive increase. Um, you know, to stop you having to, to lay out a, a, a large premium there and then. So moving on, um, with uh, sort of the claims assistance and the legal expenses, um, we're seeing more and more claims within the medical sector. Um, I, I don't know whether it's just a sign of the climate that, we've, that we're working in, um, but unfortunately more and more people are complaining. Um, this is, I think, partly to do with the internet um, and people's ac accessibility to information. Um, you know, you only got to pop into a form, um, and within, you know, a couple of clicks, you can find an example of you know, something that may have happened to you in the dental chair, which before you may have said, you know, I'm uh, a patient may have said, sorry, you know, that, uh, you know, just part of it, and and now, you know, there's 
there's companies out there pushing um, to, to make complaints and so in the event that you know that letter does arrive on on the front door we want to be able to help um, Lockton has an experienced team here um, along with uh, Louise and I there's the, the people that we spoke about and we also have um, on our board a um, legal expert um, it's a chap who actually practices a dentist for over 25 years uh, and actually also practices a, a, a GP uh, he's worked in the uh, in the dental sector both from the point of view of being a dentist but also as a legal advisor for a number of associations. Um, the real benefit to having him on board is that he will be able to speak to you, you know, very much on a clinical basis. Now at Locks we pride ourselves in, in understanding but obviously we're not dentists and uh, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a huge benefit to uh, actually speak to somebody. So just to give you a, a rough idea of the sort of covers that are available within the legal expenses. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, this is very much um, you know, just an idea. Um, each policy we can bespoke to your needs, but some of the stuff that's available um, within a policy, uh, employment disputes uh, and compensation awards. Um, we can also offer uh, legal defense, um, tax protection. Um, as I spoke about earlier, there's a 24 hour helpline which is available 365 days a year. Um, there's counseling help. There's commercial legal advice, um, VAT disputes. You know, these are just some of the things which that this particular policy will pick up. So yes, you've got your cover. Um, it's HM, uh, HM revenue and customs as well. But um, so you've, you know you've got this this cover which is ultimately there to, to defend you in, if, when needed. But at the same time, um, the cover. Um, does have a number of other elements which will come part of it. Um, but as I said, you know, if, if that's of interest, when we have the opportunity to go through a quote with you, um, we'll give much more detail then, depending on, on what elements of the cover you require. So um, moving on from the sort of individual cover that we've kind of been discussing for the last um, 15 minutes, um, corporate indemnity. Um, it's something that um, we've been speaking with Derek about. Um, and uh, it's something which within the sort of healthcare sector, not just the dental sector, is becoming a big thing. Um, as we all know, the dental sector is, um, or does have, I should say, a number of large corporates um, who you know, have over 200 dental practices um, around the country. Um, and the model that's, that's used by them is being taken by a number of the sm of sort of smaller providers. So if, some, if you maybe have, say, 10 practices uh, as a practice owner, um, then actually having a corporate policy could be of, of benefit. Um, some of the benefits, firstly, um, if, if, you were, if you were to take all of your dentists that work under um, your trading name uh, or under your practices or within your practices and insured them as a group, um, they would obviously see a financial saving. The benefit to you um, would be that you're aware of your dentist indemnity. Um, and just as an example, the, I often say this and people look at me quite blankly, but the control of claims within your practice. And what we mean by that is that if a complaint letter comes in, a lot of the time now um, it will come into the individual practitioner. Um, or so it will come into the uh, corporate name, so the dental. So ABC Dentists has 10 practices around the southeast. Um, a patient sees, you know, for the sake of it, um, Dr. Bloggs, and um, isn't happy with the treatment, and so writes to the corporate price, so to the ABC practice. Now the benefit here is that that patient may have seen three separate members of staff. Um, in this event, where would you redirect it? If all those three members of staff, those three dentists, for example, have separate indemnity policies, where do you direct it? By well, having a policy where you cover all of your individuals, one provider, one stop shop. So uh, it, it's not for everyone, and I think we're probably a few years off um, practices buying their or, or sort of giving their dentists indemnity, but I do feel that's the way it's going. It's certainly the vibe that's coming from a lot of the large, large, large corporates that's where they feel that um, it would be benefit to them for many other reasons, but I think also there's an element of uh, enticing people to work for you if, if there's a reduction in premiums 
um, but you know, there are other elements too. Um, one of the other key elements to having a, the corporate cover uh, is corporate entity cover. Uh, and what we mean by that is that if this complaint letter comes in again uh, and the member of staff that um, specifically is mentioned has disappeared off the face of the earth, um, if, for example, they may have been working on a visa and they've gone back home and you can't trace them, uh, it may be down, left down to the practice to deal with the claim. By having entity cover, which we can include within a corporate policy, this would pick that up. So insurers would ensure you as a practice owner and a practice name rather than just that individual. So obviously you would obviously refer to the practitioner's indemnity provider, but if you can't track them down, it gives you that additional cover, which uh, we feel is, is very much important. So away from indemnity completely, um, We've got a surgery package, which um, we've also got available to uh, members of the uh, DFO. Um, it's uh, something that we put together uh, a number of um, months ago for um, another provider, and we've been able to expand this to offer the same policy to DFO. Um, it's uh, with the leading underwriter, Aviva, who um, is obviously a household lane, we were keen that uh, if we were going to offer anything, it wanted to be a name that people recognised. Um, something like surgery insurance is one of those insurances which um, does get a bit brushed onto the carpet, but it is very, very important in the event of a claim. Um, and uh, Aviva has, an, has a fantastic claims um, service from the feedback we've had and uh, been able to help people out, so um, you know, that's why we've partnered with them. Um, we've made sure that the limits are as good as our major competition. Um, you know, the last thing that we want to do is to introduce you to an insurer, uh, a product which doesn't meet the needs of, uh, of, your, your, of your individual practice. Um, there's a guaranteed premium saving. Um, this is uh, subject to uh, the acceptance criteria of insurers. Um, so you know, we can't guarantee 100% of the time that we would um, be able to make a premium saving. Um, but as long as you fit the criteria which is, that can be made available to you, um, then there's, yeah, there's a saving to be made. Um, so we've seen up to 30%, um, but on average it's sort of 5 to 10%. Um, but a lot of the time the increased level of cover that can be provided um, outweighs the, the small increase or decrease in premium. Um, we, we like to have a quick turnaround in cover. Uh, we have an in-house MGA. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but it basically allows us, we have an underwriter within the four walls of our building. Um, it's, a, it's sort of separate to, to Lockton, um, but we have an underwriter that sits in there, so we can go and see them straight away. So, in the event of you needing something um, quickly, we can we can do that. Um, and sensible security uh, requirements are there. And the last thing that we want is for you to say, "Yep, yeah, I want to go ahead with the quote." We then send you the the, the security and construction requirements, and uh, you know the list is so long that no one can comply, and we've asked you to to basically rebuild the surgery, so uh, we've made sure that, that, that uh, they're sensible and uh, you know, they're fair, but not, you know, not ridiculous. Um, next slide is um, basically just follows on from the surgery package. Uh, I wanted to add in uh, a couple of things for, for you to think about, um, the sort of saving money on your business insurance. Um, as I said, the surgery insurance, the surgery insurance, sorry, um, very often gets pushed under the carpet a bit and, and just renewed. But there's actually plenty of ways to, to make a saving. Um, firstly, make sure that you only buy the cover you need. Um, it's really important to look at the policies. Uh, a number of these surgery policies have been sort of morphed over many years, and there's elements in there that you're paying for that you just don't need. Um, so we would always recommend that uh, you look through it. One of the things we were happy to do is if you could provide us with your current documents, we can do, uh, we can look through them. Um, we can't advise on specifically elements, but we can do is point out where we may make improvements, or you know we can ask the question and say, you know, do you realise this is so high, and you know, do you really require limits of this amount? Um, you know, I recently had one where someone was paying nearly two hundred thousand pounds worth of contents, um, and it all dated back to some antiques that they had in their previous surgery, and they just never noticed. And uh, the, the particular paintings were no longer um, within the practice, and the contents were probably not even half of what they were paying for. And so just purely on that basis, we managed to make them a huge saving. So uh, it's always worth thinking about. 
um, take advantage of the buying schemes. Um, you know, it's important to, to, to look at something like the DFO, the Dental Fusion Organization. Uh, we, there's obviously the, a number of members. Um, if you can buy together, if you're, you know, if you have a number of practices in a certain area and you want to buy as a collective, um, there's always um, area for premium savings. Uh, changes in business activities. It's important to, to note everything. Um, you know, if, if there is a change, even on even on surgery insurance, they'd like to know if, if there's any change in, in activities on site. Um, this can obviously make a, a negative and a positive. But the last thing you want to do is make sure that everything that you do um, is covered, um, and obviously it will make a saving in the long run if uh, insurers are fully aware. Um, make insurers um, aware of how long you've been established. This is really, really important. Um, if a business has been established for a long period of time um, and there's been no claims, then uh, it's, a, it's a far better risk. So uh, it's important to, to make that uh, establishment there. Uh, security details. Again, um, as an example of someone I had recently, uh, they hadn't made insurers aware, um, with their previous insurers, sorry, aware of, of the alarm system they had. And uh, it was one of the, um, the bang up to date um, modern alarm systems and uh, actually made a huge difference in the premium because of the area they were actually in. Um, it was a high risk area for theft and uh, just by having this alarm um, brought that risk down. And uh, moving suppliers. Um, as, as a broker we were able to do that for you. Um, when your renewal comes around it's not just about maybe going back to, to Aviva. Um, we're always uh, out looking for a new option um, and just to keep Aviva on their toes, but also um, to, to make sure that we are providing our clients the best cover uh, that's out there. So uh, always a couple of things there to think about. Again, if any of these things you'd like to discuss more, um, please do um, give me a call or um, you know, drop us a line on email. And uh, I'm just going to pass you back over to Louise for um, one last slide. Um, and basically, just a couple of other things that Lockton might be able to help you out with. Um, so I'll pass you back to Louise. Okay, so along with the offerings that Tom's obviously gone over, um, we also have a lot of other products that we might feel be maybe useful to you. So we also have direct and officer's insurance, motor insurance, which we can offer fleet vehicle insurance, which we have a division for luxury cars and our involvement with Safari Owners Club and also the Aston Martin Owners Club, which may um, be of help to you guys. Brilliant. Well, um, I hope that was a benefit. Um, to our listeners today, uh, give you an insight into to Lockton, who we are and what we're, what we're trying to achieve. Um, if anyone's got any questions, um, I'll make sure that I'm on the line for the next uh, few minutes. Um, but uh, if not, thank you for listening and uh, as I say, I hope it was a benefit. Thank, thank you, you very much. Well, thanks very much Tom and Louise. Um, and don't worry about the technical hitches, I'm going to edit this so that everyone comes out of it looking really, really good. Lockton is a very large firm with 3,800 employees, you say, and you operate out of massive offices in the city, which you do lend to us occasionally, for which we're very grateful. Uh, but <laughs> dentists might be frightened of doing business with a company as big as that. And secondly, they might assume that you know it's going to be very expensive. But then I was thinking, I do business with Pitney Bowes and Xerox, which, which are both, again, massive companies, but manage to scale down. So can you just very quickly just reassure us that you can scale down to the size of a dental surgery? Oh yes, so completely. I mean, it's it's very important that um, from the point of view of our healthcare team um, and the rest of Lockton, that we treat um, you know a three hundred and fifty pound um, surgery policy exactly the same as we treat you know a, a, you know, a billion dollar uh, hospital in America. Um, you know, we have thrived on that basis that. Um, We've been able to, you know, treat customers fairly, um, and I'm always happy to, to come out and see people. You know, even if it's, it's for, a, you know, a small surgery policy. If there's questions that need to be asked, and it's a benefit for me to be there, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things which um, I understand completely, um, but we do try to, to make sure everyone feels as comfortable as possible. I guess is what I'm trying to say. But also, I mean, yes, it is a very large company, but the healthcare team in itself is actually quite a small team. So you really would ever only speak to one of four people, um, two of which being myself and Tom. So 
Um, like Tom said, you know, we treat every case individually, and it's, it's, but we also treat it the same, the same way that we would a large one to a small one. So it's not, um, yeah, no, we would, it, it, that's not an issue. I would say to, to the people who are listening that please come to the DFO and locked in first because uh, having direct access to Lloyd's underwriters is great, but often we get dentists who contact us who, pro who we probably could have helped, but once another broker has got a no from all of the medical underwriters, Tom can't change their minds, even if, he, if they might have said yes to him if he'd brought the risk to them initially. So uh, please uh, don't go around the market and then, then come to Tom as uh, last resort because he can work wonders, but not if, if somebody has, has damaged uh, all, all the underwriters effectively first. Uh, I'm just going to reinforce your comments on speed because insurance can be organised in a day or two in a genuine emergency, which always surprises dentists because they expect it all to take weeks or months. But uh, being so close to the um, process, uh, it can be done very quickly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and what I just want to add quickly on um, your point there, Derek, about going around the market, it's um, the healthcare market is quite small, um, and I think what happens a lot of the time, and especially with the, um, okay, I don't like, like I said, I did say earlier, I don't like using the sort of distress risk word, but it's particularly when there's been a, a, of an issue. Um, but we would make sure that we completely understand the individual's needs before we went to the market. And what a lot of uh, our competitors unfortunately do is just take a proposal for them. And actually when you, you sort of buckle down and come up with a different idea, a different approach, a lot of the time you get a positive answer from insurer. Um, whereas just showing them a proposal form and showing them a claims experience, you know, sometimes the claims experience can look really bad. Um, but in fact actually it's nowhere near as bad as, as it's made out. It's just that it's the way that it's laid out and you know so it just needs more looking into it and sometimes getting the practitioner's own opinion uh, on paper as well is of, of huge benefit so yes so if, if people do come to us first it, uh, it does allow us to, to try and work some wonders. And the other thing of course is that uh, working so closely um, an underwriter working so closely with the dental association means that the underwriters through you can get a very, very good uh, assessment of risk. And that's all they're worried about because if um, a dentist is proposed to them who, for example, had a stressful day, took a couple of Valium out of the drug stock and then got hauled up in front of the GDC, that is, a, and, you know, and it was a one-off, that's a completely different risk from someone who, for example, might be a chronic alcoholic. And in, those, in that case, what we can do is we can go to the underwriter and say, look, this is not, you know, it is not as big a risk as it seems, whereas on the other hand, perhaps this other one is, is more of a risk. Um, and the reason why that helps is because without that sort of uh, guidance, um, the underwriters tend to assume that everything is the maximum risk. In other words, they, yeah. they always you know, assume the worst, don't they? And they will charge the most. But um, in, in many cases, especially after a risk assessment, where we, we may have gone and visited the dentist and had a chat with them, we can then feed back to the underwriter through you that uh, a risk is actually um, not what it appears on paper. Completely. Yeah. Now, if you joined after the start or you missed some of the presentation, don't forget because it will be on YouTube. I think we've got about 15 videos up there now, 16 including this one. Just search for Dental Fusion. And we would really appreciate it. We would really appreciate it if you would fill in the short questionnaire you'll get afterwards just to help make these webinars even better. If you're going to the dentistry show at the NEC on the 1st and 2nd of March, then we're on stand R53, so do come and say hello. And we have a full day's seminars on Saturday in, I think it's Piazza Room 4. I always tend to call it Pizza Room 4, but I think it's Room 4. That we're trying to encourage people to listen to these webinars and join Dental Fusion. So we're offering a discount code to anyone who listens to this podcast, either live or in its recorded form on YouTube. And if you're a new member and you enter the code 1971, that's 1971 when buying a membership online at dentalfusion.org, you will get 10% off either practice or associate membership. And that's valid until 31st of December 2013. So, and at the moment, DCPs can join the DFO for a pound, which would give you access to one hour's free verifiable CPD for watching this uh, DFO webinar. So that about wraps it up. Thanks very much for listening and watching. I hope it's been helpful. 
uh, for now thanks for your time and attention